a bird almost flew right into my windshield. And anyways. Hello internet friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is McKenna and I am from Primary Please on Instagram and here on YouTube. And today I have a little bit of a change of scenery because I am on my way to Michael's where I'm gonna pick up a couple of different things um, to show you different DIYs that you can do for your classroom. So I'm going to put the camera away, drive to Michael's, and I'll see you there. a bird almost flew right into my windshield. And anyways, so I just finished up in Michael's and I kind of hit the jackpot at least. I think so. I got all of this for about $30. Um, I got a lot of yarn today. They're having a big sale. This one, I, you know, it's not, it's not exactly wrapped up beautifully because I can guarantee this is, was probably a return and it wasn't actually in the yarn section. It was just like crammed in this random aisle that I happened to go down. It was originally $10 and I got it for $2.49. So I'd say that was a pretty good find. And then I got this kind of like black, dark gray with some like red and browns kind of spread throughout. And that was only $4. And then I got this really thin gray yarn for only a dollar and also this kind of, what color are you? Beige. Yeah. Just like a beigey kind of like a yellow undertone kind of thing happening. And then I know I have twine somewhere in my house because that's what I use to wrap um, a lot of my Christmas, not wrap my Christmas presents, but tie bows on for Christmas this past year. So I know we have it somewhere, but my mom and I cannot find it anywhere. So I decided to pick some up in the like Michael's dollar spot kind of area right at the checkout. Um, so I think this was only like $2. And then these I'm so excited about. I've been, ha I've had them kind of in my Amazon shopping cart over the last couple months here and there. I'll add it and then I'll hit save for later and then I'll delete it. I don't really know why because I know I've wanted to make some of these crafts for a while. But I got these like wooden beads and there's like two or three sizes um, in here. There's like a medium, I don't, maybe there's only two sizes, a medium and a large. And then a similar pack with a bunch of different sizes and colors and shapes. There's some that have some, you know, cube type action what am i trying to think of geometric there's like some geometric shapes going on um, and then there's also like some silver ones happening in there so i'm super excited about those and then oh i guess that's it and you know they get you at the end so i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna show you a couple other things that i'm gonna use and then we'll get right into the diys all right, so I am back home with all of my supplies. I have my yarn, I have my macrame, twine, sticks, beads, and these needlepoint wooden round things. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of different things. We're first gonna start off on showing you how to make a very simple tassel. As you can see, you're going to need a small piece of cardboard, scissors, and yarn of your choice. Now, I didn't measure the cardboard. I just kind of tore up an Amazon box. And I also didn't measure the length of the yarn that I'm cutting, but when I went to duplicate the tassels, I just made sure to use the same length, which was just over the width of my piece of cardboard. And you can play around with measurements to fit your individual projects, whether it's the size of the yarn, size of your cardboard, depends on what you want it to look like in the end. Next, you'll take the yarn and wrap it around the cardboard like so. I wrapped it around 20 times, but again, this could differ for you depending on how thick your yarn is or how full you want your tassels to be. After you tie your string at the top, I made sure to double knot it as tightly as I could. Then on the opposite side, you'll take your scissors and cut the bottom free.
take one last piece of yarn to tie towards the top of your tassel. Make sure that it's long enough that it matches the length of the rest of your yarn. Now I'm making a second tassel that's essentially the same process as the first, but it's a bit longer than the first one, so I just took a bigger piece of cardboard. And instead of tying just one string towards the top, you'll see that I tied two. So with these tassels, I'm going to be showing you two different styles that you can make. Here is the first one. For this garland, you can see I made some more white tassels. And I also chose some beads to string in between each one. I'm stringing this on twine, but you can use whatever you'd like. Twine, yarn, fishing line, whatever you might have. Here you can see that I tied the tassels tightly in between each set of beads. What you don't see is that after I tied it tightly, I went in and put a dab of super glue on each little tie and then I trimmed it as close to the edge as possible so you wouldn't be able to see it. And for this second tassel DIY I'll be showing you another hanging wall decor but this time it's not garland. You'll need a stick, beads, twine or yarn to hang, and both sets of tassels that I showed you how to make earlier. Jumping forward in the process, you can see that I made seven larger tassels and seven smaller ones. On the smaller ones, I added some of the decorative beads that I got from my golds to the top. Taking your yarn or twine, you'll need to secure it to either end of the stick. You can tie knots, or to ensure stability like I did, add some super glue. You'll tie your smaller tassels to the stick, spacing them out evenly. I added some painter's tape to hold them in place before committing to where I would, again, add some super glue to ensure they stay in place. Now you'll arrange your larger tassels below the smaller ones, tying them inconspicuously to the tassels hanging above. You'll see I used a crochet needle to help me thread it through. Again, a dot of super glue will help it stay permanently. The last thing I'm going to be showing you today is how to make a macrame feather. Now you can use these and you can hang them around just by themselves or you could make a couple and you can make more garland. You're going to need some macrame for this one. You can also use fun colored ones but I seem to only have a billion rolls of the natural white cream color. So I started out by measuring 40 inches of macrame to be my base. You'll see that I also took the time to measure out the other macrame lengths according to a guide that I found and after trying it out I found that the length was so wrong for what I was envisioning so I had to cut it in half. I wound up ultimately cutting 32 pieces that were 12 and a half inches long. You're going to want to fold your cord in half so that it makes a loop on one end. Slide one under your base and take another one and put it over your base. You'll pull the strands through each loop and this will be your knot. You can continue to slide it under the base from one side like I showed here or you can alternate the direction you slide your cord under and then it'll create a tighter effect for your leaf. You'll probably see me do this again. I'm just going through and tightening it so it's as tight as possible. Now comes the tedious part. You're going to have to unravel your macrame cord. I've seen people use cat brushes, but I don't have one of those, so I just used my hands. I then took the edges down to figure out where I would cut the base, and then I unraveled that too. What I didn't show was me combing this with a fine tooth comb and then spraying with hairspray to hold its shape. When I make another one of these, I think I might try to iron it before the hairspray step, so maybe try that out. Lastly, you'll want to trim or shape those edges to your desired look.
If you have made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing down below, you can follow me on Instagram at primaryplease, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!